Hey guys, Jason. And today I'm going to be talking about what is a clone coin. And I'm going to be talking about the advantages and disadvantages. But first, you know, we're going to talk about what a clone coin even is. A clone coin is an exact copy or replica of another coin. You know, it kind of goes along with the definition, right? So, you might be asking, well, Jason, how can there be any advantages to a clone coin? Because, well, I mean, a clone coin is just an exact copy, and isn't that kind of cheating the original author? Well, I, came, I was doing some critical thinking, I was, you know, doing some research, and I came up with a great example. So, let's do a theoretical um, scenario. So, in Bitcoin, or the cryptocurrency realm, there are some very strange names out there, or just inappropriate. For instance, there are coins like, you know, sex coin. Well, let's assume that this theoretical sex coin has an advantage. Let's say that it has some unique um, new money algorithm or unique um, something that it has that no other coin has. Well, you know, the problem about that is you're not going to see sex coin being talked about on CNN business or, you know, Fox business or um, Forbes. It's just not something that's going to happen because, you know, it's an inappropriate name and no um, large investor is going to invest in something that, even though it's unique, has an um, inappropriate name or a, a strange name, right? And strange, I mean like crazy strange, not like um, some random, but yet yeah, completely appropriate, completely um, okay name, you know what I mean? So, what we would do is we would take everything that that sex coin has to offer, that theoretical sex coin, of course, and we would change the name. So we would take the entire source code, all the advantages that that coin brought to the you know, marketplace, and we change it to maybe um, Ohio coin or you know business coin or something that's more appropriate to the business world standing. And so that's a great reason that um, a clone coin can exist. Now, in reality, that happens almost zero. I did some research and I couldn't find a single example of when that has ever happened. So taking into account, while that's a great theoretical idea, it hasn't really been shown in practice yet. Now our next one is something that's really, really interesting, and it's um, about failed coins. Now this is more my personal opinion. But so we talk about these um, failed coins, and it's really, really interesting. So you'll have a coin that um, maybe will only get publicized on, you know, they'll, they'll talk about it a day before it launches. Oh, hey, yeah, da, 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 is a really awesome coin. Go check it out. You know, it will start mining in a day. Well, the problem with that is, you know, you don't give time, people enough time to research the coin. And, you know, so they're already spent months of research into a couple other coins. Why would they spend, you know, why would they really investigate or spend any of their mining power to a coin that they know nothing about with only a day's notice? And so what ha usually we have seen happening is these coins will come out. Only a few people will mine them. They'll get a large percentage of the total um, amount of coins. And then they'll do a relaunch. They'll say, oh, well, we're going to relaunch this coin and they come out with all this publicity stunts and everything. The problem with that being that you have some very, very wealthy early developers or early miners, and it was at a disadvantage to the entire, you know, crypto, commu crypto community. So what I would propose with an idea of a clone coin would be the first change the name, because you can't have the same name, and then relaunch the coin with a different name. Keep everything the same, but change the name. Therefore, instead of doing a relaunch, which doesn't really change the fact that you have some very, very wealthy mine owners you know, that have lots of coins, which, of course, when they're relaunching these coins, they want to stay wealthy, so they don't, you know, they want to make, they want to basically pump and dump the coin, usually is what we see happen. And so, of course, they don't want to, you know, when they relaunch, they don't want to completely restart the coin, they just want to, you know, re-publicize it. They want to say, oh, well, it's been mining for, you know, two months and it has all these great advantages. Well, if it had that many great advantages, why wouldn't you spend a month or two talking about it, getting discussion, sharing your code, and then, you know, launching it? That way the community has time to absorb the knowledge, to research, and to really evaluate that coin. So that's a reason why I talk about, you know, you could use clone coins as a pro advantage. Another reason that people might disagree with me on is for a 51% attack. So say a coin has a 51% attack. For instance, um, there, there are some coins out there, and I, I don't want. I, I was going to call a coin out, but I'm not going to do it. There are some top level coins that have been 51 per, um, successful 51% attacked before, and I'm one of those people that once a coin has been 51% attacked, I kind of am like, okay, it's been broken. I'm never going to look at it again. There are some people out there that say, oh, well, I don't really consider it broken, and that's more of a personal opinion. But from a statistical standpoint, if someone's manipulated the network already. I don't know. I'm one of those people where I'm like, well, okay, someone's already successfully manipulated the net network. The coin's kind of broken. 
So in that case, maybe you would call it, you know, say it was called um, JSON coin. Well, and say JSON coin got 51% attacked. Maybe we would clone that coin because it has a unique source code, and we'd call it JSON coin 2.0. It keeps the original name. It's the same source code, but we're restarting the coin. Now, um, the problem with that is the early developers, the people that have mined this coin when no one else really cared about the coin, and they have all this um, bank on the coin, they'll have all this potential future profit, they don't want that to happen. Where a clone coin copy of that would be a great you know, example. Another a great example that I came up with was the language barrier issue. Now, this one is a really unique thing. So some of these coins that are uh, smaller when they start out, will only be announced on, say, a Chinese site, so a Chinese form. Now, let me ask you a question. First of all, everybody kind of knows if you're going to announce a coin, you announce it on Bitcoin Talk first, before you ever even launch the coin, you know, before you start the Genesis block. But what we have seen happen is, they'll announce this coin, it's usually an Asian coin or it's a European, European or American coins, everybody kind of knows about it because they, they announce it on Bitcoin Talk. But Asian coins that are being developed, and they, they, you know, want, they want worldwide adoption, but they'll announce it a week early on their uh, you know, Chinese form or an Asian form. And the problem with that is you give that region a one or two week mining advantage. And in one or two weeks, you can mine a lot of coins. So my idea is with using clone coins, it, and this is again assuming they have a very unique um, or something that is different that you like with the source code or the difficulties or whatever that be. And you take it and you say, okay, well, that was a, that's a great coin, that's a great idea, but the problem is, is that it's a it had a terrible um, launch. We should change the name, or you know, keep the name, put a 2.0 or version, whatever, uh, but completely erase all those coins. You don't really erase, you delete those coins, and then relaunch with a worldwide um, kind of um, promotion. Let everybody know about the coin months ahead of time um, before doing regional launches. And um, one last one that I think will be the most popular is, and we've seen this a lot, people love the idea of privatized coins. And you might say, well, I don't get this, Jason. Why would people want privatized coins? Um, because we have the test net. You know, if you want to test out a program or test out a coin, you can get on, you know, all these coins have, usually most of them have a test net. You, you know, you get free coins, essentially, and you just mess around and you test out protocols and stuff. For some reason, people like to have these privatized coins. So, for instance, maybe I want to make... Um, JSON coin, like I've talked about before, and I only want to share it with my friends or someone that follows my video. I can do that, but the problem is, is usually those people want to place an intrinsic value or monetary value onto those coins, and then it goes from privatized coin to publicized coin, and the problem with that is then it becomes a a launch, a failed launch coin because you you made this privatized coin that maybe you kept for a month. And then now it's out in the marketplace, but you were the only one mining it, or you and your friends were the only one mining it for a month, and so it has a huge disadvantage to anyone else wanting to get into the mining sphere of that coin. So I know I try to talk about the advantages that um, clone coin have, that cloning coins has. Let's talk about some of the disadvantages. And this is the big one. This is what you see 95% of the time. Someone will say, "Oh, that's a unique coin. That's a great new advantage. I want to copy that because I want to get rich off of it." And they'll copy the source code. They'll change the name. They'll change a couple images around. They'll go through the source code, and sometimes they they won't even do this. Um, sometimes they'll go through and change like if it says if it's a script, they'll change Litecoin to the, that new coin. Sometimes they won't even bother to do that, and then they they publicize it. Oh, I got this brand new coin out here. That's awesome. When in reality, it's just an exact copy of a better publicized coin, unless it falls into one of the advantages I talked about beforehand. So I just kind of want to talk about this. People have been asking me a lot because I did a couple of videos in December talking about scam coins, and I've did a couple of videos here recently as well. And people have been saying, you know, and email me um, again. If you want to email me, it's um, jpshamaful at gmail.com. I got the thing down here. But people have been emailing me and asking me, you know, Jason, what's up with these clone coins? Are they a good thing? Are they a bad thing? And I really want to do an in-depth video to explain to you how a clone coin can be an advantage, but how most of the time in the real world we see it as a disadvantage. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day.